No, fucking righty then. <laughs> Got some fucking, what was that? Ace Ventura action. <laughs> All right, we got Holy Mountain, Sunless Year, Oak Fermented, Baltic Porter. This one's coming in at 8.5. And as you can kind of see, the black on black, or at least I hope you can see the black on black. And then like fucking, I don't know, like fucking shooting stars or some shit. Galactic bullshit. I don't know. But this is from Holy Mountain. This is one of my favorite breweries. Um, let's see if they give us anything. Brewed with Pilsner Munich and a variety of crystal and dark specialty malts, Sunless Year was fermented with our house lager yeast and third-use whiskey barrels that had most recently contained Midnight Still, which is a bourbon barrel-aged imperial stout uh, blend. And it was then left to mature and condition at a cool temperature for six weeks. So right there. And the reason I chose some wax today is because we're doing not a tribute soap for So Sharp David. And I happen to know he has uh, access to some pretty damn good beers down there in California. And um, he often teases me with some of those uh, Bottle Logic brews. And so I figured I might as well bust out uh, some wax of my own. There we go. And uh, just enjoy myself a damn fine beer with this shave. So, got our Holy Mountain, what was this, third anniversary glass? Let's just pour this right in there. It is a lager at the end of the day, so, you know, putting it into a tulip or something like that, kind of unnecessary. Even though it's barrel aged in that whole nine yards, it's still a lager, even though it's a stout lager, coming in at 8.5, and that smells real nice. I'd say you get a faint, a faint sense of the whiskey barrel, or bourbon barrel, I should say. But other than that, it's just kind of, uh, maybe just a little bit of coffee. Mmm. But the taste, the taste has a lot more of that barrel character. It's still got a little bit of like this, <clears throat> almost like burnt sugar maybe, molasses, like real natural molasses. It's nice. Mm. All right, we are gonna be using not a tribute. And this one here was a a commission soap by So Sharp David, David Gonzalez, long time member of the community, and he commissioned it from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. So his uh, soap, he created, or he called for the scent, and PAA did the whole nine yards. This is in the CK6 formula. I think we all know and uh, enjoy the CK6 formula, if you're unaware. There are some ingredients. And there's that rough, um, terrible pour that actually went all the way up to the top, which means this fucker is pretty full. But, um, yeah, PAA. I guess they like to brag about that rough pour, like it helps you load a brush. <laughs> Not any more than a soft surface does. Don't be fucking stupid. Um, all right, we got a nice lather whipped up in a bowl. Um... And actually, factually, this is probably a better lather than any face lather would have ever made. Um, I don't do that pussy face lather shit that David Gonzalez does. <laughs> yeah, face lathering is for uh, the women of the community. <clears throat> it's uh, kind of akin to leg lathering. <clears throat> when you're about to have a leg shave men bowl lather. I got mine whipped up in this badass Lancaster Razorworks shave bowl and <laughs> That's about as uh, creamy and dense and luxurious as it's gonna get we got our Grizzly Bay 
shave brush here and this has a hair force one knot from strike gold shave and that is a badger knot they did raise the price at some point but it's still a fantastic option i absolutely love this hair force one knot it is one of the best badgers that i've came across and it still is at a very good price <clears throat> go ahead and work it in a little bit and don't mistake me working this lather right here as me building the lather because the lather is already built I'm just kind of getting a little bit of that scrub to uh, push the soap around the whiskers and so on definitely not building the lather any further the lather has been built but CK6, phenomenal soap. Not much um, negative can be said about it. And so I intend to have a very nice shave today. Now let's talk about the scent a little bit. The scent on this one is very nice. Um, this isn't going to be your complex, uh, thought-provoking type lather. This one is simply cherry and sandalwood. And from what I perceive, I actually get more cherry in the soap than in the aftershave. In the aftershave, I get more sandalwood. Um, so it's kind of a nice, it's almost like you get to see what it would be like, um, you know, if it was cherry forward versus if it was sandalwood forward and I don't, I don't really have much problem with that and I think it's just because I enjoy it uh, both variations you know but this one seems to be kind of like a ripe cherry natural but it's almost like they mixed that ripe natural cherry with like an artificial cherry it's almost like a, a blend of the two um, and so I, I kind of like it. I think it's nice. And then I feel like the sandalwood woody base is just a nice, um, it just gives it like this nice bit of warmth underneath. And so it is a very nice, uh, pleasant scent. This is a... What could be considered a casual banger I have uh, deemed that term quite a few videos back and so all I mean by casual banger is that this is a great scent but it might not be like sexy or cologne like but rather it's like a really good one as far as casual enjoyment goes and so like if you're just lounging around the house or running errands around town um, you might not put on something you know your best fucking cologne to do these tasks you might just want something that smells nice and this right here this not a tribute scent the cherry and sandalwood I think this would be kind of perfect for that. It's just a casual banger. Perfect for casual enjoyment. Now the razor. This is my uh, recently acquired Rado Star from the Ukraine. Um, Roman did a very, very nice job on this razor. Sorry, I got a little bit of lather right there, but... Did a very nice job on the razor. It's got the dyed moose horn scales. Got the red, black, and green going on. Got that proprietary point on it. A slight smile. And this is a full hollow blade. Seven eighths.
Very nice. Um, first time I've ever used one of Roman's edges. And I wanted to get a blade from him just because I don't see a lot of Rado Star blades out and about on the uh, Facebook and Instagram posts or, um, you know, abroad on YouTube videos and whatnot. I just don't see a lot of Rado Star. And I don't know how long the guy's been doing it, but I've had my eye on his Instagram page for a little while now. And um, I've definitely admired his uh, portfolio of blades that he's made. And so I finally took the plunge and got one. And I'm glad I did because it is a work of art and it has a really nice edge. So, let's talk about the uh, name behind this soap because it seems like some people <laughs> have this soap, uh, the name of this soap, misconstrued. It is definitely not a tribute soap. <laughs> I don't know why certain people, uh, like CDB, I think the Stallion, <laughs> but some people, you know, they're saying like, this is a tribute soap. And now if you mean like, when I use this, I'm tr paying tribute to David, then yes, you are paying tribute to David but the soap was not made as a tribute to David, regardless if it has his face on it or not. <laughs> you don't commission something, pay for it out of pocket, <laughs> and then get to call it a tribute soap. Now, I'm not trying to stir no shit up, but <laughs> I just think it's funny. And, um... I think, at this point, David should have definitely gotten a tribute soap, and, um, from PAA, I might, <laughs> like, I, it kind of blew me away a while back when he was talking about how the time frame for him to get a tribute soap has passed. Artisans don't do it that much anymore. I mean, there are exceptions, but they don't do it as much as they used to back in the day. And he was just saying the time has passed for me to get a tribute soap. And he was kind of uh, taking shots at Doug. Um, Doug being his friend, so they weren't like real meaningful shots, but... But, he said, you know, the time has passed. <laughs> if you were going to do, do it, you should have done it by now. And um, when this soap came to be, he commissioned Doug, his friend, Doug of PAA. Uh, he commissioned him to make this soap scent for him. When uh, thinking of the name for this soap, he decided on not a tribute soap, which I thought was hilarious. Just to kind of uh, set the record straight, kind of before anybody had a chance to ask the question. You already know the answer before, before you even got to ask the question. This is not a tribute soap. Because that ship has sailed, that time has passed. But I really, I don't think David is... Like, deep down pissed about it. Might be a little bit salty. <laughs> um, but I don't think he's deep down pissed about it. Actually, <clears throat> I know, I think uh, the Shaving Shop Club had the fatty. <laughs> and that also had David Gonzalez on it. I don't know the backstory behind that one, though. 
I do just assume that it wasn't a tribute soap. Correct me if I'm wrong, David. But I don't think the fatty was a tribute soap. Unless that came out after the, uh, the whole nobody has made me <laughs> a tribute soap yet rant. And I could be mistaken. But I've been watching David, the so, the so Sharp David channel, for many years now. He was one of the first YouTubers that I um, discovered that wet shaved, I think, Nick Shaves, IMCDB. Um, Busta, if you guys remember Busta, I think those guys were probably the, some of the first ones that I watched, and then I think the, uh, the Stallion and David Gonzalez were kind of in that next wave that I, um, after the hooks were set, then I kind of, uh, started branching out to more and more. YouTube channels, and that's when I discovered So Sharp David, and so I've been watching uh, his channel for years, he's made a ton of great content, used a ton of uh, products, and he's pretty much kept it real the whole way. Me and David even had a spat <laughs> at one time when I started making videos, and um, I think it was more of a... Uh, a misunderstanding than anything but we had <laughs> we had our words and that was a good time <clears throat> ultimately we uh <laughs> we brushed the issue to the side and um just you know decided to be kind of stand up men about it and just you know keep it pushing and um I'm glad we did because I pretty much <laughs> I would have kept watching his channel. It wasn't that serious to me. I might have uh <laughs> I might have said some things I shouldn't have said, but it wasn't that serious that I was willing to uh kind of burn that bridge down. <clears throat> and it is water under the bridge. Me and David have a, a good relationship now. And we have had one uh, pretty much since then. And that was an excellent shave. I think I ran over a, uh, what do you call it, blemish? I think I ran over a blemish. But no big deal. That blemish is fucking gone now, surgically removed. Like, um... I think IMCDB says that, surgically removed, because you're using a straight razor. All right, let's get into the aftershave <clears throat> we have right here, classic PAA aftershave bottle. Um, I'm indifferent about the look of these bottles. They're big, or at least they appear to be big. How many ounces does this have? 100 milliliters? That's pretty good. Um, we'll give it a shake. We'll take the cap off and rejoice the industry standard restrictor right there. But before we get into that, I often use some good oleo with PAA's aftershave. So we'll just put a few drops of that, and then we'll get a few drops of this. I know uh, CDB was a little bit salty about the new restrictor. He said it was too restrictive. I didn't see any issue whatsoever with that. I shaked the bottle with reckless abandon and the aftershave just came out with ease. No issue whatsoever with that aftershave coming out. So everybody 
who's been on the, uh, you know, death to the shit stricter wave, we can finally pop some bottles of champagne and rejoice because the shit stricter is dead. The shit stricter is dead. All right. And that was one hell of a shave. So, that set might not have been a tribute to So Sharp David, but this shave is my own little tribute to David. Been watching his channel for a long time, and uh, I definitely appreciate what it, what he does. Keep pushing, bro. Maybe one day you'll get a true tribute. <clears throat> all right. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for all the support, and I'll catch you on the next one.